Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a look at titrations and choosing the right indicator to use with your titration. So I'm going to try and keep it relatively short this tutorial. We're just going to have a look at uh, four different examples of when uh, you can use two different types of indicators. So the first indicator I'm going to look at is phenolthylene. Phenolthylene. Okay, that's that's the first one. And that is an indicator that operates in the range of between 8.3 and let's see if we can get this. 8.3 and 10 uh, in the pH scale. So that's phenolthylene there. So I just I just call that um, P. Put P on there so we know it's phenolthylene. Let's move it down there like that. And let's change that to a blue, um, so we know that it's, it's the right thing. Okay, so this is phenolthylene's um, operating range. So the next one um, we can look at. Uh, so this is this is very useful for um, things like strong acids and strong alkalis if you're titrating them against each other. And I'll I'll, I'll put them up in a second actually. Um, the next one we want to uh, have a quick look at will be methyl orange. Now methyl orange operates in the uh, pH region of between 3.1 and 4.4 so I'll get methyl orange up and I'll just try and get us. So it's, a, it's around about there. Okay, Let's move that across a little bit. So it operates in, in that and that's that's methyl orange. So methyl And these these are common uh, titration uh, reagents. So we do this is all about titrations, and I'll call that MO in there for methyl orange. MO. And I'll colour that in red. Oops. Colour that in red like that. Then we know it's connected to this one. Okay, so that's we've got um, two different uh, ranges of indicators. There are a selection of indicators, and I'll put them up to the side, of what you can choose from. But just for this um, uh, introduction uh, to titrations and choosing the right indicator, I just want to go over a few examples of when you would choose these type of reagents. So let's have a look at the first type of titration. Imagine we've got a strong acid and a strong alkali. Okay, so I'll put it up here for now. So the first one we're looking at is a strong acid versus a strong alkali. I'll just choose a red pen. If um, we titrated one against the other, we'd start off at a, in a low uh, area down here because we've got strong acid. And if we're titrating it with a strong alkali, then we'd end up over here in this pH range. So draw a circle up here, a circle down here. We end up in this pH range when we'd finished. As we added more alkali, then the eventually we come to a point where stoichiometrically we would neutralise uh, the amount of acid present. When we get to that point, that's called the equivalence point. Okay, so the curve would actually start to look. Say we added 10 mils, it would start to look like with a very sharp rise for a strong acid and a strong alkali, like that. So we'd have a curve, uh, a sigmoid type of curve there, like that. And right in the middle of this would be the equivalence point. So if I just just grab a line and uh, use dark blue. So say the middle of this is here, so we'd have an equivalence point somewhere like that. And that would correspond to a certain amount volume that's just been added okay well, that's turned in that's gone in red that should have been that should have been blue okay let's just color that one in blue as well I'll just make it a bit thicker you can see it okay so that's the equivalence point there it's halfway through you have to um Ignore my little line overlap there. It should it should be a nice smooth line, not going backwards and forwards. Okay. 
Now that tells us um, something about the um, the titration and how much we can from that we can get the amount of um, acid that was initially present because we know how much, um, for example, sodium hydroxide we've added to neutralize hydrochloric acid, for example. Um, so we, this is a volume of the alkali added in this case. Uh, so we know how much of our alkali, how, much, how many OHs have neutralized, how many protons and so on. But in terms of choosing the right indicator for this, it's very important to make sure that this vertical line that you see here is within your um, indicator is within the range of that vertical line. Now, in this particular example, both of them sit on this vertical line, so that's not too much of a tr uh, problem for us. We could have chose any indicator, and any small change in addition here, as we we're trying to neutralize it, would have been seen by both uh, methyl orange and phenothiolene. So the the, the take-home message is: make sure the um, the indicator pH range sits within this um, vertical line here, so you can get you can actually um, grab that equivalence point. Now the next example we'll look at. I'll just get rid of that one. The next example we'll look at will be a. I'll just do that a second. Will be a strong acid with a weak alkali. So let's have a look at that. So let's get rid of that title. Let's just move let's move that out of the way for now. I might use that in a second. Okay, so we've got the same indicators, but now we, we're using a strong acid and a weak alkali. So let's put that up here let's, so we know what we're talking about. So what would that look like? Well, if we've got a strong acid, let's get my red brush back again. Strong acid, something down here, say. And we've got a weak alkali, so we're going to um, titrate it against a weak alkali and say it's just above 7 or something like that. Uh, let's put it right here. So, so now, as we titrate um, against um, uh, the acid with the weak alkali, then it's going to have um, some kind of curve that looks a little bit like this. And then we've still got our equivalence point coming up, and then it goes like this, say. Now in this case, our equivalence points around here. So we put our vertical line on. It's around there, say. I'll just shrink that down. And fortunately for us, just move that across a little bit. And a little bit like that. Okay. So now um, our equivalence point is here at about pH 4, say. So we know how much uh, we've, um, our hydroxide we've added, say we're neutralizing HCl in this example, say, um, with um, actually a, a, weak alkali, um, a weak alkali in this case. I'm, I've got this wrong way. That shouldn't be strong acid, weak alkali. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got a weak alkali that we're titrating with. Um, so we've got a strong acid and, and, and the weak alkali here. You can see that the phenolthylene here um, isn't within this range. So if we wanted to actually measure the equivalence point with an indicator for this type of um, uh, reaction of a strong acid and a weak alkali, then that would be a very bad choice to use. So I'll put a big cross there. So don't use that one. As you can see, methyl orange is well within the range here, the pH range of the equivalence point. So this is the one to use in this case. So it's it's where the uh, pH range of the indicator comes um, in line with the um, vertical line you see on your titration curve. That's important for choosing the right indicator. So let's have a look at one more example. Get rid of them. And in this example, we're just going to have a look We're just going to have a look at a weak acid and a weak alkali now. Now this is, this is a, a tricky one. So we've got a weak acid and a weak alkali, so let's just get rid of that. And this is what we're looking at now, weak acid and weak alkali. 
So a weak acid, say, let's get my brush back up. A weak acid would be um, something like um, an oxalate or a carboxylic acid, say. And say, let's just say that had uh, pH starts around here. And then uh, we've got a weak uh, base as well, so we've got one that's starting around here, say. Now if we draw the, uh, the titration curve for all that, you find that these types of titration curves are a bit wibbly wobbly. Um, so say that's our equivalence point there, and it's a bit like that. Because, because the, uh, the base and the, and the, and the uh, acid are weak, they're in equilibrium, so you're always getting uh, lots of things uh, moving around as you do the titration itself. So we we now look at the equivalence point of this. Let's draw a line and a line again. You see that the vertical line here is outside of the scope of the methyl orange and phenolphthalein. So not uh, neither one of them would have been useful for this. So the the take on message for weak acids and weak alkalis is that it's very difficult actually to find a decent indicator which will fit within that range, and the best thing to use would be a pH meter and just look for that um, sudden change in pH. So for weak acids and weak alkalis, uh, neither of them would be useful, okay? Because of this, we're looking at this vertical line when it suddenly changes. So. The only one I've missed out actually is a weak acid and a strong alkali, and it follows the same example. So I'll just whiz through that now. I'll just get rid of this. Okay. And we're keeping the pH ranges. I never moved the uh, pH range of these because they're pretty fixed, really, because phenolphthalein comes within that pH range and methyl orange in that pH range. So let's have a look at the last example. It's a weak acid and a strong alkali. So let's get rid of that. It's a weak acid and a strong alkali. So weak acid is going to come about here. Let's put the markers on again. So say a weak acid comes about there. So it starts off in the right range. And we, now we've got a strong alkali. So let's, let's say it's, it's way up here. And if we draw titration curve now because it's weak remember it's going to be a bit wibbly wobbly this bit here until it gets out of the range and then it'll go up here and then we'll have some sudden change in pH because we've got the strong alkali there okay so you've got that weak acid um, equilibrium going on there so we've a look at this one now we draw our vertical lines that'll tell us um, how much sodium hydroxide or whatever we've added keep saying sodium hydroxide, obviously it doesn't need to be sodium hydroxide. And I'll just make that a bit thicker so we can see it. And I'll change the colour to blue as well. So it stands out a little bit. And that line's a little bit off there, but we'll leave it for now. Okay, so you can see the um, equivalence point for this um, and the vertical line for the sudden change in pH is well within phenolphthalein's um, pH range. So for a weak acid and a strong alkali, phenolphthalein is a really good choice. Okay, so we'll give that a big tick. And for um, a weak acid and a strong alkali, methyl orange is a bad choice. So have a look at the tables for, um, for your indicators. Have a look at the pH range that they operate in. And then have a look, uh, this type of um, uh, systems I've just mentioned. So you've got the first one was a strong acid and, and a strong alkali, and basically because the, the range is so uh, vast, um, you start off down here, end up over there, you get a really good equivalence uh, range, uh, uh, this vertical line range. You'll cut through both of those um, indicators. You could use either one. Um, the other, other ones were like a strong acid and a weak alkali, were uh, really, the phenolphthalein range was was well out of this vertical line, and um, the next one uh, I actually looked at the weak acid and weak alkali, and then none of these indicators were really suitable, and I, I recommend just using a pH meter for that. And the final one is this one, which is the weak acid and the strong alkali, and in this case, uh, phenolphthalein is a good a good uh, choice for this one. Okay. So that's the end of um, 
this introduction to titrations and choosing the right indicators. I'll put lots more examples up and I'll um, I'll actually uh, um, introduce some, some some ways of calculating how much uh, acid we've got from an unknown amount and things like that using these type of titrations. So bye for now.